So we got it running. Um, now it's time to get it driving, which means a lot of things, mainly controls. Uh, but before that, I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this horrible pile of spaghetti here. Like, I I'm just going through and deleting all the unnecessary stuff. Like, all of these are grounds. That is a long one. And all three, it has three separate locations to go to ground. I, that's, that's excessive. You only <laughs> need one. The wiring harness is considerably smaller and tidier than it was. That pile, that's all from this harness. It's all the stuff I got rid of. And it starts and runs. Should fire right up. Yeah. It's a little more choke. She just wants to run. Yeah, she does. This thing runs so strong. It's awesome starting with an engine that works. <laughs> an electric start for life. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in Moab, kickstarting the Jeep, I kicked it till I was blue in the face. Okay. <laughs> I was about ready to push it off the nearest cliff. <laughs> so after much thinking and debating and going through many stupid ideas, we've come up with a good solution for the shifters, or for all the controls. So gas on the right, brake on the left, paddle shifters, and on the, so right side will be shifting up, left side will be shifting down, and the left side paddle will be split in two. So the front half of it is the shifter, and the back half is the clutch. So you'll be able to pull just the shifter with these two fingers, just the clutch with these two, or both at the same time. That's that's what you want in life, a Camaro <laughs> with paddle shifters. The only thing you could have that's better is a turboed Camaro with paddle shifters. Wait, what? Need any linkages? And just have one push rod, straight shot to the shifter. So it'll just push down to shift up, and it'll pull up to shift down, which is actually the right way it needs to be for the side that it's on. Because if you pull on this lever, it pulls up on this, which is shifting down. You know, pushing on the other side will do the exact opposite. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break to talk about the sponsor for this video, Cove. Now Cove sent Ethan and I the Solitude noise canceling Bluetooth headphones and they are awesome. I've been editing with them, Ethan's been working with them. I can edit in the garage and it cancels out all the noise from the tools so I can mix the audio right for you guys. The battery life on these things is insane, like up to 12 hours of use. I edited every video this week, haven't even charged them yet. Ethan's got his music bumping through these things while he's working in the garage. They work up to 30 feet away, which is insane. The noise canceling works really well. They have the options to skip the song, pause the song, and they have a mic so you could take a phone call while your phone's in your pocket or 30 feet away. So it's pretty awesome. It's been helping us out a lot in the garage, get a lot of stuff done in a really high quality way. They're super light, comfortable, and they have a really nice cushion on them. So you can wear them all day, not even notice. Also, they come with a bag, they fold up, so you can store them anywhere. They're perfect for traveling. And the best part of it all is they're 65% off right now. So check out the link in our description and go grab a pair of these. You won't regret it. Check out the reviews. I mean, that speaks for themselves. And let's get back to building. Today is an exciting day because today is paddle shifter day. I'm gonna start by obviously making a uh, cardboard template of the shape that I want the paddle thing to be. Get that kind of roughed in and then make it out of steel and make a pivot point and go from there. Their souls pass through the morning Fog and her eyes whisper words that her mouth cannot. Keen for the purpose of finding one thing, that feeling you get when you suddenly know everything. Bring 
hide somewhere. I made this plate that looks like maybe like maybe a weapon or a big batarang. Know. Anyway, uh, also I accidentally made some sunglasses. Diamond plated too. Diamond plate sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of the rough outline. Obviously it can't just be around the steering wheel as one piece, but this half needs to be two pieces anyway for the shifter and clutch. Uh, so it'll basically cut here and through there, and then that way it can go around the steering wheel and I'll have a bolt all the way through the steering wheel here as a pivot or something like that. Well, it's a really good thing. We properly enjoyed the rally track yesterday. First snow, so stoked. Time to get some tracks for the Odyssey. Maybe bust out the snow bike again and start upgrading that. If you guys want to see that, put it in the comments. So I've got the um, central pivot part welded into the steering column here, the bolt through it there. Uh, I'm gonna just put the clutch on hold for a minute and work on the shifter. So first thing I need is a rod uh, to go here to push it back and forth and then I can figure out how far it needs to move to shift. As I said a second ago, <laughs> I loudly proclaimed I am incredibly stupid. Uh, Look at this, it's beautiful. It works great. If you didn't have to steer. Now, if the heim joints had a little bit more swivel to them, it's possible. I mean, I, I will keep experimenting because there is a chance. That sounds like it's working, huh? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I may be incredibly stupid, but I'm also incredibly lucky uh, because if I thought about this enough to realize that turning was a problem, I wouldn't have done it, but I did it anyway. And uh, because this has such an incredibly small amount of steering angle on the wheel, it works. That's full lock to the right. And you can still sort of shift. It binds up a little bit, but you're not gonna need to shift at full lock very often. And you could in a pinch. It's gonna be the easiest, most solid way to shift that we've ever done. Oh yeah, super easy. And like finding neutral is always a pain because it's between first and second. This is gonna be way easier because you can feel it, you know, with your fingertips. We'll have to have a uh, slice through the dash. It'll probably go about up to there through the tack, which sucks, but it'll be worth it. Uh, a lot of you have been worried that we've given up on the Triumph. We haven't. As you can see, we were working on it today. Uh, it's just being very stubborn and not wanting to run right. So we will get back to it. We're not giving up. <laughs> Now I just have to make the clutch part of it, which I've already got the lever. I just have to tack it onto its sleeves there and then figure out where the cable goes. Here's the cable. So it'll come up somewhere like that-ish. officially going to be at SEMA. We're going with Go Power Sports and Cars and Cameras. So we'll be at the Go Power Sports booth there. And we've got the Camaro getting pedals today. Yeah, so last night I finished the uh, paddle shifter, um, which, you know, miraculously works with its pushrod design. 
uh, and then I finished the clutch as well. So it's time for rear brakes, well, the only brakes, on the Camaro. And uh, we have plans for this bike, but those plans don't include this rear brake. So got this bracket done, it took a while, but it's uh, super minimal, super lightweight, and more importantly, it works. And Cinderella's getting some SEMA prep too. We got that new radiator in here, just got it from another quad on eBay. So that is not gonna leak. Already a huge improvement. Drilled some holes back here, and Sam's got the front I-beams off to paint them up look nice and pretty for SEMA. They mostly survived Moab, so we think they can survive the backyard for a little longer. <laughs> he almost straight after Ethan got a good solid bend on this one. Yeah, I bent the crap out of this one in Moab, and uh, you can see where I was hammering on it to get it straightened a bit while I was still in Moab driving it. That's what we were going for. <laughs> yeah, so we tack welded it to the welding bench this morning and straightened it out, and it's, it's close enough. I think I just made the smallest uh, brackets I've ever made. Yep, that's a tiny. We have brakes. Very complicated, but very effective brakes. Got some holes punched. Now it's time to uh, put it the piranha and dimple them. Got the brake all finished up last night. It uh, feels really nice, it's all bled. Now I just have to basically do the same thing for the throttle. together much quicker than the brake pedal and uh, it's got this sweet little twist lock I mean that was that was the original from the ATV so I just made a steel bracket it slips down in there twists it's nice and snug and then this just that's a little hot still slips in there <laughs> that goes in there And that's a gas pedal. Oops. I'll just do some quick welds here and practice my TIG welding since it's all set up for that. And then uh, we should be ready for a test ride, but here's the throttle. It's very simple, but uh, quite effective. It's just a scrap of stainless I had to go with the stainless pedal, but it works out pretty well. Yeah, 
I mean, it doesn't run like, I mean, it, like it doesn't want to dev super great, but that's probably because it's got one foot long headers, no air filter, and uh, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So good on the ground. It really does. Lift it up on these monster tires. Yeah, I love the way. I think it looks way better on these tires. Yep. Than the for sure. Tires. We'll have to get a body and uh, modify it to fit the um, dirt tires. Oh yeah. But uh, those control arms uh, cannot handle the power. It's actually not the uh, suspension that ruined the control arm, it was the power. Yeah, that's crazy. It's super bent, like yeah. two seconds. Yep. And that side's totally straight because that side doesn't have the torque. So yep. major reinforcements are in order, which sucks because we have two days before SEMA. Sure. But in the meantime, that was fun. <laughs> I bet. It's ridiculously fast. Yeah, it was a grip in like nobody's business too, even on the leaves. That was only second gear. Wow. These tires definitely grip. Yeah, it handles pretty well. Um, it's really hard to say with the minimal time I had on it, but. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a, uh, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> as usual, we broke it. Yeah. It wouldn't be a proper test session if you didn't break something. Yep, I bet none of you guys saw that coming. Yeah, everyone's shocked. <laughs> Ethan drove something and it broke? What? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the controls are great, although it takes me a while to get used to them because, not because they're bizarre, because they're so normal. I'm so used to the Jeep and using its controls, I was like, wait, what do I do? Where's the brake? Oh, right! Where a brake should be. Yeah, how's shifting? Shifting's pretty good. Um, yeah, I wanted to get a shot, like, right here with the GoPro, but next yeah. time. <laughs> it's not like there's a lot of shifting going on. It's super, super fast. Were you in second when you are coming down the driveway? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
silly fast. Awesome. Well, back to the shop to build a new swing arm. Hey, you. Yes.